Hey everybody, I'm JJ Johnson, you're watching Reality Survival, and today I am bringing you just a short or partial lesson from Patreon. This one is called How to Prepare for an Economic Depression. So we're going to go through the first five items on the list here, and if you'd like to see the remaining items, then you can sign up for Patreon at um, about three cents a day, or a couple of cups of coffee per year. Um, I think these 14 items on this list are really good practical advice that's going to uh, help set you up for success if we do happen to go into an economic depression. Uh, this is also a representative sample of what the lessons on Patreon look like. And so it just kind of give you a flavor for it. If you've been wondering about it, if you've been thinking, man, maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't, this is going to give you an idea. Um, each of these lessons, um, you can print them out. You can download them. Uh, I upload uh, pretty much every file type. I'll export every file type that I can so that you can open them. So it'll be in PowerPoint, it'll be in Keynote, it'll be a PDF file. Um, it's also in HTML document as well as pictures and screenshots of each slide. So then the idea is, is that hopefully you will take this information and pass it along to friends and family to hopefully get them educated on prepping as well. Or, you know, if you want to take it and, and manipulate it and use it for your own stuff, then in, in teaching uh, other people, you can do it that way as well. I just ask that if you do that, you take my logo off of it. But anyhow, uh, the idea is just to spread the word about prepping. So, um, and a lot of the stuff is really useful for putting into information um, or in, into emergency binders as well. So here's the deal with the economic collapse lesson. I am not 100% sure that we are going to have an economic depression, uh, but there are some indicators that are leaning in that direction, so maybe it's a good idea to talk about. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and just get this started here. Um, the first thing is, is you want to make sure that you secure your current job status. This is really important because the people who suffered the most in the Great Depression were those people who were fired or laid off from their jobs. Now, those people who continued to work fared much better throughout the whole, whole ordeal. You essentially want to become the MVP at work. You want to show up early, work hard, leave late, make sure you resolve any beefs with bosses or coworkers, and be the guy or gal that they just cannot do without. Your income from your primary job is very important to for you to get through this depression um, if, it, if it happens you know without any hitches you want to look at completing some advanced certifications or taking advantage of cross training opportunities so that you know every job in the office um, maybe even for, further your education within your field you know do something to make you valuable in that job that way, if the bosses have to make decisions about who has to get laid off or who gets fired, you can be the last man standing and everybody else has to go. All right, the next one here is start a side hustle. You want to earn as much income as possible as quickly as possible. Now, you've probably been thinking about some potential side hustles that you could do for a while. A lot of people have that on their mind. Um, and maybe it just means that you take a second job, or maybe it means starting a side business that you've already you know, been thinking about or have the aptitude or skills to do. Some of the things that popped into my head while I was creating these slides were maybe you could do like mobile oil changes where you go to the person's house and change the, the oil in their car or change the brakes on their car or something like that for them, like a mobile mechanic kind of thing. Or maybe it's car detailing, or you could be an Uber driver, or maybe sell crocheted or knitted products. Maybe you could make masks and sell those to people. You know, or maybe some other kind of handmade wooden products or furniture, or maybe you can just get a, a job online or doing something like that. Basically, just look for something that you can raise some additional cash. Having a secondary income stream will allow you to utilize the money to get started for hard times, to get, get your preps all ready to go. Now, obviously, we're not talking about anything risky like robbing a bank or gambling or anything like that. Um, and you might also want to consider, you know, in, in some traditional relationships, you have a spouse that works and then another spouse that stays home with the children. If that's the case, could the one that stays home with the kids consider doing some babysitting or maybe drop-in daycare at odd hours or overnight daycare for night shift workers 
Um, or is there some other kind of online job that they might be able to get? You know, having two incomes or three or four incomes is obviously better than one. And, you know, doing all those things is going to help you be ready to get your uh, cash reserves built up and ready to go. Uh, obviously, the people with significant savings are going to do much better than those people, those without. So I recommend that you try to have at least one full month of expenses in cash in your home. You want to be able to pay for everything that you normally spend money on for each month. So we're talking about all of it. You know, bills, groceries, entertainment, all those items. Then once you've got that in place in cash in your home, then you want to look at having two more months of savings in your savings account as a minimum. But if you can do more on your budget, then go ahead and do that. Now, uh, obviously, we're going to want to stock up on food, and food scarcity and economic collapse go hand in hand, so increasing your long-term food supply is hugely important. You should consider having at least a minimum of 90 days worth of food in your home, with a goal of having one year's worth of food being even better if you're concerned about a long-term economic depression. Uh, check out the Food Supply 101 lesson that I recently published on Patreon. It has a uh, very thorough list of almost 100 items on uh, items that store well long term. Um, this is broken down into multiple sections so that you have items that, that uh, will store for 10 years or more. Then you have um, from 10 years down to uh, 4 years and then from 2 to 4 years. And each item, each category, it also has how many calories are per pound or per um, unit for, for that item. And then also, it also is broken down to how long the shelf life is of each item and how much you want to have of it in your stocks. So it's a spreadsheet that lays out basically everything that you need to know to get started on a one-year food supply for a family of four. And that... that spreadsheet adds up to just over 4 million calories. Now you could, the cool thing about it is you can take that spreadsheet and personalize it for your own use for the foods that you like to eat and then just start buying those items on the list. So I think it's a pretty good resource and the feedback on it's been really good so far. Okay the next thing is is you need to find a reliable group of people. You need to have a group of reliable people in your life that you can trust and that who care for your well-being. Here's the thing. These people do not have to be preppers right now. You can make them into preppers later. You can help convince them into it by sharing these lessons and stuff like that. Here's the thing, though. You know, one accident, one car crash, one house fire, or any kind of other calamity can be the difference between success or failure during an economic collapse. You need to find a group of people to form a close relationship with so that if they need help, you can help them. And conversely, if you need help, they can help you. You want to lurk. I suggest looking into um, church groups like church home Bible study groups. Um, if you're a veteran, you could take a look at like the VFW or uh, Disabled American Veterans or something along those lines. Um, they've also got you know like the Moose Lodge, the Elks Lodge, and in those other kinds of fraternal orders. And generally speaking, the cost of membership is going to be well worth it for the network of people that you'll be introduced to. And I think you're going to find that a lot of these people are already preppers. So anyhow, guys, that's the first five. There are nine more in this list. If you would like to uh, see the rest of the lesson, then you can head over to patreon.com forward slash American Prepping Academy or just go to patreon.com and search American Prepping Academy and you'll see the logo pop up and you can sign up for as little as three cents a day, a dollar a month. That's all it is. You know, we're talking about a couple of cups of coffee per year basically and that's going to get you access to all the lessons. Uh, you'll be able to download everything. You can put it into your Mercy Binder. You can use it to share with your friends and get more people to be interested in prepping so that there's less people who aren't prepared that you have to deal with if there is a collapse. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. As always, I definitely appreciate it when you click the thumbs up button and share it with your friends. And don't forget to live the six Ps. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe, guys.